The discovery of electricity is arguably the most important scientific breakthrough of the last 200 years. And what we learn about today is how power stations work and how every single volt or almost every single volt of electricity you've ever used comes about. Now, um, both these diagrams here involve a magnet and a wire. And the definition I'm writing here is for the generator effect, which is a wire that cuts across magnetic field lines. There is a potential difference induced. It's also known as electromagnetic induction. So when that occurs, if there is connected to a circuit, then there is also a current that flows as the electrons travel around the circuit. So let's look at both these examples then. On the top example, we've got a coil of wire which is connected to an ammeter. Now it's a very special type of ammeter, it just has a dial um, moving a needle back and forth instead of uh, numbers on a screen. When we move the magnetic field towards it, um, there is an PD induced that because it's connected to the circuit causes there to be a current so the dial will move to the right. If we are to pull it back out the current will reverse into the opposite direction so it will go to the left. When there's no movement there's no current. The second diagram is very similar apart from if we have a wire moving in a magnetic field rather than the other way around um, that's a hand, by the way, trying to move the wire up and down in the magnetic field. Same thing again, you'll have a current in one direction, and then if you move it in the opposite direction, the current will reverse, so it will go in the other direction on the dial. Again, if there's no movement, then there is going to be no current induced at all. It's as if nothing happened, even if the wire is in the magnetic field. So, this is the generator effect and the electromagnetic induction is the about to talk a bit about potential difference. Now, one other thing to note is, and this is quite a tricky concept, when we push the magnet into our coil of wire, the current that's induced has to either be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if you view it from side on, then you will see either the current is going this direction, clockwise, sorry, that's anti-clockwise, or this direction, clockwise. Now, uh, if you remember from a previous video, um, that enables us to tell if it's a south pole, because it's going clockwise, because the S's kind of go clockwise, or a north pole, okay? Now, the current, whether it goes north or south, depends on the change that's causing it. So, in our first example, the north pole is moving towards the coil of wire. The coil of wire has a current induced in the direction that opposes the North Pole going in. So to oppose it would be to repel it and that means there has to be a North Pole induced. It would flow anti-clockwise to make it a North Pole to oppose the magnet going in. If I was to move the magnet out to oppose that change, the coil of wire would have a current induced in the direction to attract it back in. So this time it would be a South Pole and it would be flowing in the clockwise direction to oppose the change that's causing it. Now, your questions to do with this are often to do with um, why generators are easier to turn or harder to turn or why there's a resistance to motion, um, which this is an example. Uh, what you'd have to say in words is that the induced current is in the direction to oppose whatever change has caused it. Now, um, you might see a demonstration of this with a copper tube with a magnet falling down it, um, which if you haven't seen, uh, try and uh, find it online because it's really good physics. And it's kind of an example of Newton's third law. The action has an opposite reaction. Now, how do we use this effect um, to actually make a lot of electricity rather than little amounts in a ammeter? So you need to have a generator, um, which is a loop of wire. And you'll notice this looks very similar to the motor we looked at in a previous video. This time, though, someone is turning the wire. So you have motion going into um, the coil of wire this time rather than coming out. And as you turn the wire around an axis, there will be some uh, PD induced and electric current induced. Um, now, reason being is because you're moving a conductor through a magnetic field or across magnetic field lines in exactly the same definition we talked about earlier. So the current will be induced in a certain direction. And if I wanted to there we go, in a certain direction positive, for example, um, if I wanted to flip it so it was going negative, 
that would happen when the wire was going around in the opposite direction. So let's have a look at the current being produced, or this could be potential difference. Um, it goes to zero uh, when it's horizontal, and then it carries on turning. It's going to be maximum negative when vertical, and then keep on going positive, negative, positive, negative, um, which we should know is alternating current because it's changing direction. Now, um, so as summary then, to reverse the direction on the potential difference or the current induced, I can either reverse the movement, so it's going in an opposite direction, or I can reverse the magnetic field, so I could switch over the north and the south pole. That's obviously a bit harder to do because you have to you know, change your magnets around, uh, but either of them would work to reverse the direction of the current or the PD induced in our generator. If instead of reversing it, I wanted to increase the potential difference, so have a greater voltage or a greater current um, induced, I could do two things. Instead of reversing the magnetic field, I could make it stronger, so a stronger magnet means a greater PD, or I can move the coil of wire faster. So a faster movement or a greater force would mean there is a greater PD. Okay, let's just go off the bottom of the screen here slightly. That's a stronger magnetic field um, at the bottom. In addition to that, I could just have more cores of wire. If I just had 100 coils instead of um, 10, uh, sorry, 100 turns of wire instead of 10, uh, one turn, that would uh, also work as well because I've got more wire in the magnetic field. Now, the last thing to do with this topic is uh, learning about what a dynamo is. So a dynamo is a type of generator. Um, whereas an alternating current is produced, um, sometimes that's called an alternator. So it's a type of generator that produces alternating current. A dynamo produces direct current. And how it does that is the same method in the motor effect, which switches over the current to keep the motors turning, is our friend the split ring commutator. So the split ring commutator reverses the current every half turn, just like in a motor. And what that does is instead of producing alternating current, it produces direct current, as you'll see in the diagram below. So it starts off the same goes positive but instead of going negative it flips the current so now it's positive again and a positive and it continues being positive at different values but all in the same direction so it's direct current way of remembering it is dynamos the direct current the alternators produce alternating current begin with an a